recently there's been some work done. I've been working with a couple of guys, um, the son of uh, Christopher Dunn, who wrote some real seminal uh, textbooks on ancient Egyptian technology, his son Alex uh, and Nick Sierra. They're uh, qualified like professional metrologists. They work they work for Rolls Royce in Indianapolis. They uh, they make like you know aerospace parts, turbine blades, things like that. They've got their hands on a pre dynastic Egyptian vase, and for the first time, they've actually been able to scan this thing using a structured light scanner and define the specific elements of precision on it. And it's just astounding. Like this is. This, this puts the whole concept of can these even remotely been made by hand to bed? Like these things had to have been made on a machine and made with extreme precision because this vase that is, is pre-dynastic, this is a, a picture of the vase here that they found in, in a private collection because I should say generally archaeologists, Egyptologists, they're not engineers. They're not particularly interested in sort of how things were manufactured. So what, what they've done is they've taken this and put this in a machine and it, it, it's a structured light scanner. So it creates like a point cloud of different lights and then you match a geometric shape to it, be that like a, a flat plane, a cylinder, a sphere, a, a cone. And then you can perform sort of geometric um, calculations on it and define things like precision. So if you go back to that, uh, the surface, a the vase lip, right? So this is you can see down on the bottom, they, they've created a, a, a point cloud of the top of this lip, so the flatness, and it's, they've called this surface A. It's comprised of 3,813 uh, points, and it's within three thousandths of an inch uh, of being basically perfectly flat. Wow. But and that's three thousandths of three an inch. Three thousandths of an inch. And this is over who knows how many thousands of years well, of erosion and it, sand and dust and wind. And exactly. It's, it's at least... 5,000 years old. I, I suspect this could be far older than that. Now, what's interesting, once you start doing this, and if you go to the next one, Jamie, you now, he's now, now we're looking at the, the lip. So this, you take a cylinder and you match, you basically take 10,000 points plus and you match the, the, the inside, the mouth of the vase to a cylinder. And what you can now measure that against the other surface. So if you think of like the top of it as being like the x-axis, this is now your y-axis. So that first symbol here, the perpendicular symbol, what, you sh what it's showing is that how perpendicular is this cylinder on its axis relative to the top of the vase, the surface A that's on the top, within one thousandth of an inch. One thousandth. So it's perfectly perpendicular to within one thousandth of an inch of the top of the vase. And then the second reading here shows you how perfectly, what's the circular error, like what's the circularity of it it's within thirteen thousandths of an inch of being perfectly circular. How and are you going to do that by hand? You, you, well, you can't. This is this is the thing. And if you you, you go, literally can't. No, the, no one's ever been at you. It gets you can you if you rub two surfaces together, you can make them flat. But when you start looking at the the real teller in in precision and in these discussions about ancient engineering, the the it's an easy thing to understand when we talk about ninety degree turns and flat surfaces. But what gets really interesting is when you start talking about one surface in relation to another. And remember, these objects like the big boxes in the Serapium that weigh like 70 tons, you've got surfaces, you know, 11 feet apart. It's the relativity of one surface to another. So how flat, how straight is this in relationship to this surface? Right. And with this vase, the, the, the incredible thing about it is, is that it's, as you go down it, there's a, another slide if go you can look the at the, image. yeah. Um, and you should mention how much this equipment costs real quick. Well, how yeah, so these technology. structured light scanners are like $250,000. They're, they're professional. Yeah, this is, this is absolutely a tool that gets used in aerospace quite a bit. So no one's ever um, really done this type of work. So um, this, and it does, there's nothing like this approaching. You can't do this with handwork, this type of thing. But if you slip, skip to the next one. So now it's, this is like, this is a great example so what you're doing here is, is measuring the circularity. Go to the next one because the lug handles are kind of the really important part of this. It's an interesting thing. So for one thing, it's showing you that, okay, they, they solved the problem of carving granite. It's made from granite. It's actually made from the same rose granite that the, the box in the king's chamber of the Great Pyramid is. Yeah, not pottery, just to, not in pottery. case someone doesn't right. understand this what this is. Right. This isn't pottery. I, I, People can, often can call it pottery. pause real quick? Yeah. When you talk about these measurements, yeah. what kind of measurements can be achieved through ceramic pottery? Well, ceramic pottery... If you're spinning on a wheel, I, I'm not even sure. You might be able to get down to, to tenths of an inch or, 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 or half. Like but you would never get to thousands. Not to a thousandth, no. And, and this is carved. So this is carved out right. of stone. Right. Um, Hard but I'm stone. just saying, like, if you think about a pottery wheel spinning yeah. and you think about the precision involved in that and you look at it, it's beautiful. It seems oh, symmetrical. It's it seems amazing. But 
nothing no. compared to this kind of symmetry. And so to give you an example, so a thousandth of an inch, uh, if you take a sheet of printer paper like this, uh, this is that's about seven and a half thousandths thick. Holy shit. A, a human hair, two to three thousandths of an inch. So it's half a the human size hair. of a human hair within of being perfect of being within, perfect yes so holy shit that's how that's how precisely aligned the mouth of the vase is now so f again we've carved this out of stone and remember they don't even the uh, egyptologists don't say that these they're not spun they're not they're not cast and created they say that the egyptians you know used very primitive tools to make these pounding stones chisels flint chisels what did they say in the face of this they don't, so they don't address data. it. In generally, they don't address the evidence for precision. Should this hold is hold them down, huh? <laughs> Should hold them down. Well, this is what I'm like this... literally grab them and <laughs> yeah. go tell me what the fuck is going on. <laughs> this work should should do a bit of that because there's always been arguments. How many of these are there? I well, mean, it's not just one perfect one that you're talking no. about. No, oh no, this is the only one they we've managed to scan so far. And I would, I would love to say that if, because you, you can't get your hands on these things, that in general, um, curators of Egyptology museums aren't interested in their, in their manufacturing or engineering and they don't gain, you don't get access to these vases to do it. This how one came from not, a- How could they not be interested in that? I don't know. It's, it's, it blows my mind. So here's an example of like another perfect, I'd love to scan this one's one of my favorites. It's like, you can see the symmetry inherent in the vase just in the fact that it's sitting on like, almost like the, an eggshell. Like it's, yeah. it's so perfect. Um, but what what it what that study is showing, and what those that that precision that's now been measured is showing that okay, these were turned on a machine, and not only were they turned on a machine, but when you think about the shape of the vase, it has these lug handles right on each side. They're like got little holes. Yeah, through. those can't be turned. Those, those right. you can't if you think of it spinning and you cut and this is being carved by a machine. Right, those lug handles can't be turned. You would have to cut out like a round thing around it, and then take another tool. And, and shape the lug handles without turning it. Now, in precision manufacturing, when you introduce another tool, that introduces error, even in our best processes today, and we just don't see that on this vase. Like, those lug handles are within one thousandth of an inch of being perfectly aligned with those other surfaces of the vase. It's that, it's that relativity of one section of the vase to another that means, A, unquestionably not possible by hand, but B, this has been designed like somebody made a model of this and they had a very sophisticated bit of machinery that must have carved it out.